Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'll explain a somewhat confusing feature of the HDMI protocol that I'm sure you'll see on most modern media equipment. It's called ARC, which stands for Audio Return Channel. It was introduced back in 2009 as part of the HDMI 1.4 standard, and it greatly simplifies the connections you'll need to make between your media equipment and your display devices, as well as introducing high-quality audio. Now, essentially, what ARC does is provide for a bi-directional connection for the audio signals over a standard HDMI cable. And before that became part of the standard, you would have to run an HDMI cable, which was one direction, into an output device, and then run a separate audio lead back, either analog or digital, to whatever amplifier or soundbar you were using. Because ARC is now part of the standard, you can run one single HDMI cable to HDMI ARC compatible devices, and it will handle both the video stream and the return audio back to a soundbar or an amplifier. Now, as part of this overview, I'd like to show you a few connection diagrams of what it looked like before ARC came along, and then what it looks like now to show you how much simpler it is to connect up your devices, and I'll also show you how it works with a lot of the O-Ray equipment. And then finally, I'll come back and actually demonstrate it here because the ARC standard is part of most modern media equipment that's out there, and it's important if you're shopping for something that you look for that ARC symbol on it because, again, it greatly simplifies the number of connections you'll need to make between your media products and your display devices. So stay tuned, and I'll show you the connection diagrams next. Before ARC audio was introduced, let's say you had a DVD player that you wanted to connect to your TV, and you also had a sound bar you'd like to use for better quality audio. You would start by making an HDMI connection from the DVD player to the soundbar, and then a second HDMI connection from the soundbar to your TV. To pass the high quality audio from the TV back to the soundbar, you'd need another analog or digital audio cable connected between them. With the introduction of the audio return feature of HDMI, the connections are much simpler. You'd start by connecting an HDMI cable between your DVD player and soundbar, and then connect the second HDMI cable between the soundbar and the TV. Because ARC provides a two-way path for audio signals, it eliminates the need for a separate audio connection between the TV and the soundbar. That audio is now sent directly to the soundbar over the single HDMI cable, simplifying the wiring and delivering superior high-definition audio. If you're using one of the O-Ray products that supports ARC audio, you can take advantage of all the benefits this standard provides. For example, if you have a DVD player that you'd like to share a movie with a remote location in your home, you'd use an O-Ray HDMI extender kit. This kit includes both a sender and a receiver module. To start, you'd connect an HDMI cable between the DVD player and the local display at the primary site. You can then connect a second HDMI cable from the HDMI ARC output on that display to the sender module. At the remote location, you'd connect an HDMI cable between the receiver module and the display at that location. Finally, you'll make a network connection between the modules to start enjoying your content. Most receivers in the HDMI extender kits provide support for ARC audio, and you can simply connect a second HDMI cable between the HDMI ARC output on the TV and your soundbar to enjoy theater quality sound. You also have the option of connecting a soundbar at the primary location to the sender module using an analog or digital cable. Now I'll show you the basic connections you'll need to make if you're using an O-Ray HDMI extender kit. For this demonstration, this side of the table represents the primary location where you're enjoying the content today that you'd like to send to that remote location. I have a small media player over here that's looping a video, and that's the media content that I'll distribute across this network to the remote location. This side of the table represents that remote location where I'd like to enjoy that content, and I have a monitor set up that has an HDMI ARC connection on the back. I have the sender module here and the receiver module over here. The first set of connections I'll make are to the sender module, and I'll start with the media content. I've got a short HDMI cable plugged into the media player, and that connects to the HDMI input port on the back of the sender module. Now I'll connect up the monitor. Another short HDMI cable connected to the monitor, which plugs into the HDMI output port on the back of the receiver module. Now this particular model of HDMI extender has a feature called POC, which is power over cable, which means you can use a single power supply at the primary or secondary location, and the minute you make the network connection between them, power will be sent over that LAN to be able to power up both of the modules. So one single supply will keep both of these modules operating correctly. 
Now I've already plugged in the power supply here, so I'll connect that to the sender module. And the minute I add power to the sender module, it starts a power on self-test where it's checking all the internal electronics to make sure everything's working fine. It's checking the resolution of the input source and making whatever adjustments are needed to send the best possible picture and clearest audio across that LAN connection. Now the only connection I'm missing at this point is the LAN cable between the two. And I've got a short LAN cable right here and I'll connect that up to the receiver module and the sender module. Now the minute I make that connection, you'll notice the power indicator come on over here. The power is being distributed across that LAN connection and the receiver module is going through a power on self-test as well, checking the internal electronics and checking the resolution of the monitor, negotiating the connection between them and making whatever adjustments are needed to give you the best possible picture. Now you can see the picture's already up over here. Now what's interesting is you'll also notice indicators here, SP diff and ARC. So that's digital audio or ARC, which is standard audio from HDMI. And you have a switch right here to switch between them. Now I'll hit the switch, watch what happens. I'm now on ARC. Did you notice over here? The ARC light came on as well. So the communication between these modules lets the secondary module know that you've made a decision on which audio source you're gonna use. Right now I'm set up for ARC. So I could connect the sound bar up to that ARC output connection on the back of this monitor and enjoy the audio that's coming through the single HDMI cable. And it really is just that simple. The best part about this solution is that it fully supports HDMI ARC audio, as well as power over cable, even audio extraction at the primary site where I can actually physically connect up an external audio source to this or an amplifier or a sound bar at the primary location through either digital or analog audio. So everything you need is included with the kit and it's very, very simple to connect up. I hope you found this video helpful. And even though the ARC feature has been part of the HDMI protocol for quite some time, it takes most manufacturers a little while to catch up with those standards. But if you're in the market for new equipment, a new display, new media product, or maybe a new soundbar, search for that HDMI ARC symbol on the back, which will ensure the connections will be simple and you'll get the best quality audio and video possible from that equipment. So until next time, thanks for watching.